Okay, so let me show you guys how I basically make and design my puzzles. So we open our design space into a new project. What I do is I have a front and I have a back. So I start with my shapes and I'm going to choose a square that has rounded edges. Um, and I'm going to go to the lock here and I'm going to unlock it. So Cricut Basswood comes in 15 by 30.5 centimeters. So I'm going to change it to 14 centimeters wide. And then I'm probably going to make it, I like, say about eight. So it's not a huge puzzle. It's big enough to do a five letter name or to do... For example, well, let's make it five. Okay, so think of it. If you want to do more than one puzzle per sheet, so count for that. Okay, so with that, and then I'm just going to change it to brown because you want it as close to the color as basswood so that you would see kind of what it would look like in real life. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate that because you need a front and you need a back. So we're going to go here on the right hand side, I'm going to say duplicate, but this one we do have to change to a different color because we're using the Cricut Heavy Chipboard for the backing because it's really nice and strong and it is a little bit cheaper than the basswood, so it would save you money in the long run. Okay, so now that we have our front and our back, we can decide what we want to do with this puzzle. So you can go and go to your images. For our theme... Let's, because I've already done animals, so I've done safari animals in my profile. You can see I've done safari animals. I've done under the ocean. I've done frozen theme, which I unfortunately can't share because it's an uploaded SVG. I did cars as well as my original ones or trucks. Let's just look through and see what would be nice. Okay, yeah, so I've found some very cute woodland at uh, animals that I want to do. So let's do those. Let's choose a raccoon. Um, I don't want them all to be the same color. Let's do a fox. That fox is super cute. So that's four. Maybe just one more animal. Um, um, okay, so we chose the hedgehog. We chose the fox. We chose the skunk. And maybe let's do the owl. I'll just do it in different colors. Okay, now that we have this, my sizing around about, I thought was a good sizing, was about five to fit on. Obviously, we'll change it um, according to how they fit on the puzzle. But five is a good starting point with the dimensions that we've already started for our puzzle. Okay, because as you can see already, it's not fitting. So we'll have to go a little bit smaller, not doing things too close to the border. Because as soon as you go close to the border, you risk the wood cracking when it's done cutting or while cutting. Um, in which case, yeah, you're pretty annoyed, to be honest. And it is annoying. So just make sure you don't go too close to the edge. I wouldn't suggest being within like a centimeter of the edging and a centimeter of each other. Okay, so now we have our four little images, pretty cute. What we're gonna do is each one, we're gonna go here to the offset at the top and we're gonna do an offset of, I'd say, let's try 0.25 and see how it looks. I think that looks decent. Let's apply it. And then you can see that it's around the image there. Okay, so let's do the same for all of them. So once you've done it once, it does remember your settings. So you don't have to go retype it every time, which is great. Okay, so there's our offset. So let's just change our offset to white. So we can see it a bit better. Okay, so once they're all white, we can see if we're happy with where they're located. Noise them quickly. So just say 
group, that means we're not attaching them to each other. We don't want to attach them. It just means if we move them around, the offset sticks with the image, which is what we want. Okay, so now we're going to put this back so we can see if we are happy with where they are located. I'm not quite happy with that one. I mean, we can even change them around. They don't have to be where they are right now. And if you want, what you can actually do is create a border um, on the inside here, a one centimeter border on, border on the inside, or an offset. Let, let me show you. So you go here and you go offset, and we're gonna do a negative offset of one. So negative one. So there's our offset. So this is half a centimeter around the border. Okay, so as long as we're within that half a centimeter comfortably, then we're good to go. Because we just don't want to be close to each other. We don't want to be close to the edge. And yeah, so that looks okay. So I'm just going to take that away now. I don't need it, so you can delete it. Okay, so that puzzle's looking pretty cute. Um, we can ungroup it now, because now we don't mind if we move the pictures away that we are going to draw on vinyl. Okay, just see how there's a little dot there. Not that it matters, um, but let's go contour it out. We're just going to get rid of it there. Okay, nobody wants that. Okay, now what we have to do is we can either attach it. There's nothing wrong with attaching it. Um, but we'll do the same thing as basically cutting it away. Okay. So now... Great, these are going to cut out from our border. Only issue is we have no, they're going to be quite stuck in to the puzzle. So we need to make a way of being able to get them out. And what I do is I take our half circle, okay? And I take a half circle and I resize it to half a centimeter by one centimeter. That's good enough for kids' finger size. Um, and that'll work fine. So you would duplicate that. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take them and we're going to find a spot that we want to put them on. Alright. So I wouldn't recommend doing it near the borders. Let's zoom in a little bit here. I wouldn't recommend doing it near the borders because then you risk cracking your puzzle. Which does happen. So just be careful. Um, but you also don't want to lose your shape. Okay, so let's zoom in some more. And this is better to do on your laptop versus doing on your phone. I have designed on my phone before and it is possible, but it's also annoying. Okay, we're gonna put it there and now we're gonna say exact same thing, we're gonna attach it. Okay, so now it's gonna cut out this puzzle piece and it's gonna cut out that finger piece. We're gonna get rid of that finger piece. It really doesn't matter to us, we don't need it. Now we're going to do the same thing. I would suggest doing the finger pieces in similar places. Um, simply because kids, they get confused. They do get confused. So if it doesn't fit nicely, I would suggest just resizing slightly. There's nothing wrong with them being slightly smaller. You can make it slightly bigger if you want as well. Um, if you feel like maybe your child's a little bit older and their finger's a little bit bigger, I've got little kids, so this actually works perfect for it. So we're just going to make it touch a little bit more than we normally would, which is fine. We're not losing out, but just make sure it does blend a little bit. You see how it's sticking out there? I'm not happy with that. That's a lot better. Okay, so now we're going to take that, we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to attach it so it cuts that piece out, as well as the puzzle piece. Okay, so we attach. Okay, and then we're going to go on to the next image. Two more to do. Once you get into it, it's, it's super quick and super easy, and you can motor through quite a few puzzles. Going to resize this one a bit as well. 
just so it fits better. Touch that, and then let's do the last one. Okay, and zoom in. We're gonna bring it forward so we can see it, and we're gonna rotate it. This one's nice because we can do it by the tail for this one. We couldn't, unfortunately, couldn't do it by the tail for the other one because it's too close to the edge. Uh, and then we attach. Okay, so now we've got our four pieces and we've got the little finger piece so that we can easily get it in and out. And we can just say arrange and bring to front so we don't fight with it. So there's our little owl, there's our little hedgehog. So, yeah, we've got our puzzle cut out, we've got our four little pieces, we've got our little finger pieces here, all on the same side, so we don't confuse our kids. Okay, so I've sorted out all my color choices for my little woodland animals, and now we're going to move on to cutting the wood, and yeah, let me just show you what we're going to do. So we need a beer. Um, this is the Cricut brand heavy chipboard. Um, I already have a piece that I've used, so I'm going to carry on using this piece. Um, you do need to leave it out for at least 24 hours to acclimatize to your climate. Um, maybe it's very rainy by you, very dry by you. It might warp, so if it does warp, just put a, piece, a heavy book on it or something. My knife blade is not new. I've made five or six puzzles now and I've done a memory game using chipboard so it's not as sharp as it used to be. Um, if yours is new however just be cognizant of it and know that if that is the case um, it's going to cut through a lot quicker so you need to watch or it will cut your mat. As you can see, my mat is also not new. It is well used. Okay, so I'm going to position it like this. We're going to do 14 down and one and a half across. Make sure that... Let me change your roller. What are we doing? Your rollers on your machine um, are off the bar to the side. Because the chipboard, the heavy chipboard is quite thick. So... You don't want the rollers going over it because it will damage both your chipboard and your rollers. I'm just putting my duct tape on to keep it in place um, so it doesn't move while cutting. So you need to make sure, even with, I mean, even if my mat was still sticky, you'd still do this. It just ensures it doesn't move around and you don't have to stress about that because it can damage your machine obviously if it moves around and gets lodged in somewhere that it shouldn't. Um, yeah, so just tape it down because I've used this already. I'm going to just tape it here as well so this doesn't move. Um, because it's such a simple shape with the chipboard, the heavy chipboard, it, it really doesn't take that long to cut. Okay, so that's ready to go. I'm gonna load it in there, taking the protective covering off of my knife blade, putting it into my machine. Okay, um, and that's ready. So now I'm going to say continue on my laptop. Just needs to find my machine. I'm using my USB cable. I don't connect usually via Bluetooth. Um, so if we look here, I am going to choose. You get two kinds of chipboard. 
get the 1.5 and I think you also get let's search for it so I can show you okay so you get heavy chipboard which is what this is um, you get chipboard you get light chipboard and you get paint chip so now even though this is heavy chipboard we can choose it um, it's going to say a lot more passes than you actually need so let's just choose it so I can show you guys Okay, it's saying that move the wheels all the way to the right, make sure the material is no wider than 11 inches. That's about 22, 27 and a half, 28 and a half centimeters because the rollers are still on the side and it would ride over it. Um, and make sure it's on the strong grip mats using tape on all four sides. Okay, um, you can say remember material settings, but this is the only piece of heavy chip what I'm doing. Okay, it says load the knife load in the clamp and then you're going to press the load button. So let's go over here so you can see. Okay, so I'm pressing the load button. Um, and then I'm pressing go. Okay, so that was about seven or eight passes that I did. Um, just be careful when you do take your tape off that sometimes the duct tape does pull off some of the top layering to the chipboard. It's quick and easy to cut out. Um, it's not a long process to cut out. And if it doesn't cut through, which mine didn't, because I needed seven passes, um, next time I'll do eight. Sometimes certain sides that don't cut through the same. With a heavy chipboard, it's fine. Um, just make sure when you do your bass wood that it does cut through nicely. Okay, so that's our one piece done and sorted, our backing. Okay, so with the bass wood, um, this is the Cricut brand bass wood. I already have a piece, so I'm not going to waste. Um, I'm just going to put it upside down. So we'll put it here in the corner. And we'll tape it down as well. It doesn't move. I'm going to go with the next piece of my puzzle, which is the basswood. One of my favorites already. It's the basswood. 16 one sixteenth of an inch which is 1.6 millimeters so I'm gonna choose that one again telling me stall wheels all to the right da, 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 da. and then using my knife blade and my clamp B and then I can load it okay so I think it's done I'm gonna offload it because I don't want it to break. It did, I think about eight passes. Um, and I had to start taping it down because obviously my mat is not sticky anymore. So it started lifting and in order to risk not damaging my machine, I just aborted mission. Um, so yes, like I said before, um, it does not need 14 passes. 14 passes is way too much. It will destroy your mat. Um, yeah, but that looks good. It's mostly coming out. Anything else we can probably fix with my blade. Okay, so I could see puzzle pieces lifting, um, which means obviously it's cut through. Um, anything that hasn't cut through, I'll just use my blade to cut myself. Um, but let's just get all this tape off. Luckily, unlike the chipboard, the basswood doesn't peel with the tape, so you don't have to stress about that. I uh, can see it cut mostly, except at the top. I don't know. Sometimes there's an issue 
working with where it cuts and where it doesn't cut. And it would probably need one more pass. Um, but that one more pass might be too much elsewhere. Yeah, that one more pass might be too much and I might send it over the edge. In which case, you know, either you would lose your mat or you would lose a puzzle piece or you would damage your machine, which is obviously worst case scenario, which is what we don't want, which is what I don't want, which is why I offloaded mine. So you can hear when it cracks, that's when... Okay, so I managed to get all of my pieces out and I was definitely living life on the edge because you can see how close they are to the edge and how close they are to each other, which is what I warned you against, but they did not break, thank goodness. Um, the ones that did get stuck I patiently took out and then put back in again. Um, I will just clean up the edges a bit to make it easier for them to go in and go out. And then I'll glue it to the backing. Um, gluing it to the backing will obviously help strengthen that. And then we will cut out our vinyl to go on our little pictures. Okay, so now I'm going to cut out my vinyl. I'm going to use um, colors from these packs. Okay, so I'm going to use the pink from my pastel set, which is very cute. I'm going to use my orange from my brats. I'm going to use my beige, my black, my white, and my silver, and my brown from my basics. Don't think I'm going to use anything from this one. I'll keep it aside. So basically these three gorgeous sets. I'm going to be using them. And I'm going to cut out the pictures. So I've layered all my vinyl. Uh, we are now going to glue our back and our front together. So you're just going to take your puzzle pieces out because you do not want them to be glued in place because then you can't have a functioning puzzle. So we take our pieces out gently just because it is, um, you know, thin. Um, I'm using the Heritage Quick Set Wood Glue and I'm basically just going to spread it everywhere. Okay, and so after leaving it to dry overnight, uh, you can leave it with a book pressed on it. Uh, you can take it apart and you can see it's nicely bound together. Um, and then we have our puzzle, which your little kitty can play with very nicely, if I do say so. Um, yeah, so there we have it. You can easily take them out. Perfect size to be able to grip out and they come in and out nicely. And I hope you try it out and let me know how it goes and I'd love to see your creations.